Hey, this is Matt with Two Feet Two Worlds, and today I'm trying something a little bit different. This is video one of a four-part series that I'd like to do on China, teaching in China. Uh, some of the positives and some of the negatives of teaching in China. This particular video today is going to talk about the 10 most difficult things about teaching in China. The goal of this video is to address some of the issues and difficulties that you may face when teaching in China. And I want to preface this by saying that there's also a lot of positives about teaching in China, but as in teaching in any foreign country or living in any foreign country, you're going to encounter some problems and some difficulties, uh, things that are just different. And I want to address some of those in this video. The positives definitely outweigh the negatives though. If that wasn't the case, I definitely wouldn't have lived here for the five years that I have teaching. All of the things that I'm going to mention today are things that I personally faced. It's not an exhaustive list of everything that you may encounter but it is uh, from experience. Also, some of these may be applicable in other countries. I don't know, I've only taught uh, in America and China. So everything I mentioned, uh, you might be able to place them in another place, or if you have taught in another place, it may feel similar. So let's begin. Number one, class size. If you're coming to teach in China or you're thinking about it, you cannot expect small class sizes. China is the most populated country in the world. It's not uncommon to have class sizes of 50 or more students. I have 17 classes this year. Do the math, that's a lot of students. That's upwards almost of a thousand students that you have. Even in America, it would be hard to learn a thousand uh, students' names if they were English. And you add that with most of the students here don't have English names or you give them an English name. Uh, you have to remember all those faces, you have to remember all those names, it can be quite difficult. Now, think of that, and then you think also of testing, quizzing, exams, homework, yeah. Another frustrating part about this is you can't get that one-on-one -on -one time with the students, especially some students that you feel could benefit from that. Uh, their level is a little higher. You kinda have to pick and choose where you uh, spend that time, that extra time, and having only 40 minutes, uh, 50 minutes in a class, that can be quite difficult as well. Number two, language barrier. I know this may seem like an obvious one, but I kind of want to flesh out what I mean a little bit more. Not knowing the Chinese language can be a huge hurdle. You don't need a huge grasp of the Chinese language to come teach in China, but it definitely helps. Now, some schools do have a translator they provide for you, when you're here, when you're teaching, but that's not always the case and something that you shouldn't expect. Now, on my phone, I do have an app that allows me to translate when I do need it, so that is very helpful, but you can't always rely on it. Sometimes the translation is not correct. Your students will be sure to point that out. Just because you're teaching an English class at a school doesn't mean that the student's level is gonna be up to par with what you would expect for that age level. Uh, each class also may have a different uh, level of understanding that they have, and you have to plan for that accordingly. It's just good to remember and be flexible with whatever you get. Number three, English class is sometimes viewed as less important than other classes. Point three actually goes with point four, so I'll explain that in a second. English class is sometimes viewed as less important or a throwaway class and that can lead to a lot of different problems. It can be difficult and frustrating, especially if teaching is your livelihood and passion. That leads me to point four, lack of motivation in students. As you can imagine, if your students don't view English class as being important, that can also lead to a lack of motivation. Uh, your students aren't gonna be motivated in a class that they don't really care about. So you have to find ways to get your students involved get your students motivated, get them excited about learning. That's where you as a teacher come into the picture. So what does this lack of motivation look like? It can be six or seven students sleeping in class on a given day. Sometimes it's students not wanting to do the activity that you've planned for the day. They just don't do it. They'll just sit there with their arms crossed and don't really want to do it. Number five is lack of communication. This can take many forms. Sometimes you aren't told about an exam the students have. So they 
are taking that exam, you normally had class that day at 7.30, you show up and your students aren't in class. They're overtaking the exam somewhere. And that's just someone forgetting to tell you that the students had the exam. Uh, so you wake up and you go to class as normal. In China, it's not uncommon to have a makeup day on a weekend because there's a holiday the next week. And if you are not told that you have a class on that day, you just treat it like any normal weekend and you don't show up. And I've had that happen a few times. Or maybe you might get a call that day. Why aren't you in class? You didn't show up to class and that's a possibility that on a weekend you get a call telling you to come to class and you kind of just have to bite the bullet, act professionally and show up and do your job. We have a saying here amongst my foreign friends, it's, this is China. Uh, things like this ha are going to happen and you just got to roll with it. Uh, you can't make a stink over it. You just got to act professional and move on, do your job. Number six is curriculum. In America, curriculum is usually a set thing. In China, that's not always the case. You may get a book here in China and you're asked to use it, but the student's level isn't up to par with that. So you may have to work around that, teach them some of the bottom concepts and words and different things like that. You have to be creative when coming here uh, to teach. It's also not uncommon to have a whole bunch of different classes that all have a different level and you have to plan your lessons according to each class individually. Number seven is learning the chain of command. The idea behind this one is it's not always obvious what the chain of command is. In Chinese culture, you may not always know who's in charge. Uh, titles don't have the same meaning here as they do in America and vice versa. You have to ask a lot of questions and you have to spend some time getting to know people you have to spend some time getting to know the people in your department, and it may be a few weeks or even a month or two before you know who the true chain of command is where you work. It's not uncommon to have a high turnover rate at a place where you work either, so having to learn new people that come in and where they fit into the puzzle is also difficult sometimes. Number seven, flexibility. You've probably noticed a reoccurring theme especially with the last seven, and that's being flexible. The computer and the projector that you need for a certain class that you planned your whole lesson around, you can probably expect it not to work every now and then. AC, I love AC, everybody loves AC, but not every class that you uh, teach, not every school that you teach at is going to have an AC. So expect, especially where I live, Hainan, uh, the temperature today is supposed to get to 38 degrees Celsius. It's pretty hot. Uh, I don't have any AC. The windows are open. I uh, expect to sweat. You sweat a lot. Uh, you just have to be flexible and take it. You're not going to last long if you're not flexible here. Number nine is holidays. If you teach in America, you're used to those two big holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's not uncommon in America to get around a week for Thanksgiving and three to four weeks for Christmas and New Year's. We do get a lot of time here in China uh, for holidays. Uh, the big holiday here is Spring Festival. We get anywhere from a month and a half to two months sometimes of time off as well as summer. Thanksgiving and Christmas, however, are not a holiday that is celebrated in China and you have to take that into account. It's not uncommon to get only Thanksgiving day off or only Christmas day off. And sometimes you have to have that in the contract. You have to have them write that in. Now it is possible to ask for Christmas Eve off. I have seen some people uh, get that in their contract, but that's something you have to actively fight for and ask for. It's never a guarantee that something you ask for is something that they will agree to and put in the contract. Just expect that. Number 10 is not always being able to understand what is expected of you. So you got the teaching job. You know what age group of students you're supposed to be teaching. You know what subjects you're going to be teaching. You begin to prepare. Suddenly, out of nowhere, you're asked to do something that you are not prepared to do. Sometimes that's training teachers. Sometimes that's a workshop for the students. Sometimes that's English corner or game time or something outside of uh, really what you thought you would be doing. That's normal. This is China. 
And sometimes you're gonna do that activity, you're gonna do that workshop, and they're gonna tell you it's not what they were looking for. It's different, it's not uh, what they asked you to do. And you're gonna have to ask questions, ask your foreign friends, ask people who've been here a while, what, what do they want from me? And sometimes that's not obvious, and you're just gonna have to wait some time and try some different things out, be flexible. This is China. I say it every day. Well, all right, that's all 10. I hope you guys found this interesting and helpful. My goal is to provide insight and help into this wonderful culture that is China that I live in. Its differences to your culture and mine are sometimes confusing, and that's okay. That's part of learning, and who doesn't like learning? That's what my channel is all about. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. If you are new here and not a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you are a subscriber and you have not hit that notification bell, please be sure to do that. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.